2023 is half over and that means it's time to flip through my journal from the first half of this year. And this one has ended up quite a bit wider than it was when I started, which I don't usually love, but I'm finding really satisfying this time. My name's Erin, I share bullet journaling and stationary content here on YouTube and I'm very happy to have you with me for this video. My grid spacing ruler isn't in its place because I've been using it, so I'll just pop that back in very quickly. A lot of my themes for 2023 so far have been very floral inspired, which is not unusual for me, but it is a little bit more so than in my previous journals. Having said that, I've been very happy with every theme so far this year, which is a very nice feeling because it doesn't always go that way. <laughs> I will pop links in the description below to each of the individual setup videos that are featured in this video, as well as the live streams where we did some of the weeklies. I am still going to be using the first part of this book for the rest of the year because I've left space, for instance, June here in my memories spread, and of course the following spread, which is for the rest of the year. And also onto the next one, which is my cash flow tracker. I find it easier to just have all of this stuff in one place. So at the end of each month, I'll just pull this journal out and update these trackers. And I'm pretty happy to do that rather than moving everything into a new journal. I keep my ribbon bookmark on the cash flow tracker so it's easy to find. I don't seem to have any problems with fitting six months perfectly into a 160 page journal like this, which is very nice and neat. I actually didn't set out to do that, it's just kind of happened consistently for the past couple of years. Don't feel bad if your journal doesn't follow that same pattern, it just means that you use it differently to me and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a good thing. Your journal should work for you and not necessarily for me because you are not me and so on and so forth. If you look very closely on my January calendar spread here, you can see where I've brutalized the book a little bit by sticking a lot of stuff into it. Some of the page booklets have lifted away from the spine a little bit and you can see that they're separating here. So I think I gave this book everything that it could handle, which is very satisfying. I've been feeling very fairy tale, very storybook this year. So these pastel tones are something that you'll be seeing a bit more of. They are just the colors that I like to surround myself with anyway. And I figure that's always a good way to start a year. Like January is a good time to do the thing that you really, really love. I also knew I was not going to be with my journal for half of January and half of February, so I only set it up for half of the weeklies for each month and also made my trackers half the size and that kind of thing too, and took some liberties with Dutch doors because I knew I was going to use less pages than I usually would because I wasn't doing as many weeklies, so I was like, here's an opportunity to just experiment, you know? I was actually away on my trip in Scotland when the Year of the Rabbit hit, but I still wanted to celebrate it, so when I got home I made this Year of the Rabbit spread in my journal. February I wanted to feel appropriate for Valentine's Day, but I also was still having fun with messing around with things. I was feeling very brave, I guess, so I made this window in the cover spread, which was really fun. It's a little bit more maximalist than I typically gravitate towards, but I had such a good time putting this layout together. I was also away for half of this month, so I've only done condensed versions of the habit and mood trackers, and I actually completely forgot to add my spending log, which is usually a really essential spread for me, so I ended up sticking it at the very back of the book, very unceremoniously, and you'll see that a bit later on. If you're a bit of a stickophile like me, you may have more in your collection than you can really envision yourself using. So I started doing these seasonal changes spreads as an opportunity to use some more of my stuff and also to really demarcate the seasons to myself because where I live, we don't really get clear distinct seasons. So that was my way of being like, let's pretend. March was very outside my comfort zone with these black boxes and bold, colorful PET tapes. Even the butterflies are not really usually in my wheelhouse, but I really ended up loving this theme so much. It was really fun to come home to something bright and very special and whimsical. It was also the first opportunity to get back on live and set up these weeklies with you guys. And it's always so much fun going on live and planning together. And I really enjoy that. So stick around if you'd like to do that. We have the August live streams coming up very soon. In the past, I always did the same weekly spread layout for every weekly of the month, but I've been really mixing things up this year and I've been enjoying the variety of having a different weekly spread layout from week to week. It's been really engaging and keeping me interested, which is very nice. After all those bold colors, I don't think I have ever made a bullet journal layout that felt more like me than this one that I made for April with all of its soft pinks and its kind of pearl inspired tones. I just thought it was so pretty, so romantic, so delicate, very ballet kind of vibes, which is very much what I like. 
Often, my entire theme is inspired by just one piece of stationery that maybe is a recent acquisition or something like that, but somehow this one came together very complete in my head, especially once I found those little off-white skeleton leaves and I just kind of knew how this was going to look, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Every now and then we get a page like this where I'm just testing out a washi tape or some stamps and now I'm going to lead in really hard into the fairy tale vibes because we've got fairies in my May setup. I found that beautiful printed floral paper at a second hand market and I just fell in love with it and knew that it had to be what May was all about. I've been bullet journaling since 2017 so I really have a good idea of what works for me at the moment. The spreads themselves don't really change that much from month to month, but I love the challenge of making them look different with the way that I decorate the pages and so this was a really fun one for that. There's a quote from C.S. Lewis that says, someday you'll be old enough to start reading fairy tales again, and I think I hit that this year. And it's reflected here in my journal and also in my reading journal, because I've been reading a lot of fantasy novels this year. And maybe it shows, maybe there was some bleed through here, and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> These little season changing spreads we actually set up together on a live stream and the winter one somewhat inspired the beginning of my next journal which is kind of cool. I'd been planning to use this spot for recipes but clearly it didn't really pan out and now we're into June which I think is one of my absolute favourite bullet journal layouts I've ever done. I love how minimal it is, I love the colours, I love that it's quite whimsical and fantasy inspired but still really functional. And of course, at the time I'm recording this, we are still in June right now. So the spending log I haven't got to yet, but I will fill out the meal planner. I accidentally kind of ignored this month. It just happens sometimes, but that's okay. I can still get back on top of it for July. Everything is gonna be fine. <laughs> I might miss this layout just a little bit though, because it's been so much fun. So maybe something similar will have to happen in my next journal, we'll see. I am already brainstorming a little bit for August and it is currently leaning a little bit fantasy as well so I think that's just where my head is this year and that is A-OK. -okay. Who knows where next year's journals will take us, it could be anywhere. I have a page here where I planned out the spreads I wanted to include in my next journal so I knew that I wasn't going to miss anything. It's not very pretty but it really does the job. I do like to do a little bit of mood boarding, so this was actually a mood board for my next journal. And then I have some notes here from some Skillshare classes that I've taken and stuff around the internet that I wanted to remember that I've written down in the last few pages. They're not very pretty and they're other people's content sometimes, so I won't share those with you. Here's the mood board for my June spread, which um, ended up similar but different. That February spending log that I mentioned earlier ended up here because I forgot to include it, so I just ended up putting it on one of the last pages because I knew I needed the data somewhere. It's not pretty and it doesn't match the theme, but that's okay. And there is one leftover spread that I haven't done anything with. Here you can see where I've removed the page to make the grid spacing ruler that's at the beginning of the book because I needed to harvest the paper for that. And that's it for this entire journal. It is just about full to the brim. And you can see here, this is what I was talking about where I mentioned some of the paper booklets have come away from the binding and that's why it's it's not falling apart, but if I pushed it too much harder, it might. I have already set up the initial pages for my next journal, which is this lovely navy blue hourglass journal right here. There are links to both of these journals in the description in case you fell in love with one of them just now. I wanted the themes to look like they went together, the beginning of the first journal for the year and then the beginning of the second journal for the year, kind of like a continuation. So I've used similar colors and similar patterns and that kind of thing. If you are also moving into a new notebook and you're looking for some inspiration, I'll pop a link in the top right corner for you here or in the description. I have also already set up for July, so if you'd like to see that video, I will also have a link to that one for you down below. It's very cute. Again, very outside of my comfort zone. Thank you so much for flipping through my first journal for 2023 with me. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and I can't wait to see you again in next week's video. Until then, stay safe and happy. Bye.